All right, this is what it looks like when Disney absolutely has your number. So here's all the stuff that we ended up getting from Disney World in the last week. This doesn't show all of the t-shirts and the um, hoodies and other things, but we've got the hats and the pins and all sorts of things, and I'll kind of walk through each one of these things. Um, I have them generally separated by the land that we got them in. So uh, let's look at um, Animal Kingdom. So Phoenix wanted a hat, so we ended up getting her this hat that came with some pins on it. And she wore that around a lot. Uh, and I ended up having to get some pin locks because it, these come with little rubber backs that the pins will pop off if you like put it in your bag and take it back out of your bag a few times. And we actually had that happen. So we ended up buying pin locks for all the pins that we put on our um, bags and hats. So that's one of the hats that we got. Uh, <clears throat> Phoenix loves her stuffies. So we got a Yeti from the Everest, Expedition Everest. Love that ride, that was a good one. She was really into that roller coaster. And of course we also had to get um, Explorer Mini here. And she's a pretty cool, she's in her little safari outfit. So I got uh, a bag here. This is a pretty neat bag. I ended up carrying this around quite a bit to put my sunglasses and other things in. And I've got a couple of pins on there, one for Pandora, one for the Expedition Everest, and uh, the Kilimanjaro Safaris where you get to drive around through the park and see some of the animals. Moving on, uh, I, I don't remember if we got this in Animal Kingdom or not. I don't think we did. This is one of the waiter penguins from Mary Poppins. He's all hand crocheted, or well, probably not hand crocheted, but he looks like he's handmade sort of an item, and he's nice and fluffy. And fun. Moving on to like Epcot. There's a lot of cool things. We didn't get to spend a lot of time in Epcot because uh, the Food and Wine Festival was going on and it was super packed and it was a holiday weekend. So we did a few things. We got Phoenix this passport where you can go to each of the World Showcase places and see. Uh, different representatives that are people from the actual countries. So like, for example, here's the Norway one and uh, you get stamps to put in your passport and then the cultural representative will uh, write in your passport and do a little drawing. Let's see, where else did we get to go to? Oh, here's one from the UK. See that sometimes they've got stamps that they'll put in. Sometimes they'll just write little things. So that's pretty fun. Over there in Epcot, we also have, uh, there's, there's an imagination exhibit and Figment is sort of their little mascot for that. So this is Figment the dragon. He's a figment of your imagination. Again, Phoenix loves her stuffies. So we got him and only available at Disney World. We both love our pop uh, collection. So, Phoenix and I share pops, and we got Chef Figment because he's part of the Food and Wine Festival. We'll probably take him out of the box. We don't collect them to make money or anything. We just like them a lot. Um, this is one that was over in Disney Springs. It's a place we ate called Raglan Road. And uh, they have this glaze where it's Guinness... Uh, reduced with some sugar and cut with olive oil and then you dip their soda bread in it and it was absolutely delicious just a little bit of sweet a little bit of bitter just the perfect sort of uh, stuff to dip your bread in so we had to get some of that and and bring that home Jen has Starbucks ornaments so we Got one from each of the parks. Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, and Epcot. Uh, and these are much smaller than, they, they have the big mugs that are probably about twice this size if you actually wanted full mugs, but we'll put those on the tree because those are fun. We have some, some other ones that are like that. Moving around here, uh, we when we were Running around the parks, Phoenix loved to get her 
autographs filled in. So we met a lot of characters. Pluto, Princess Aurora, Vanellope Von Schweetz. Um, she filled this thing up, and so we'll have to print off some pictures and, uh, and get them in there. And she also got a pin. We got a lot of pins, but she likes frozen, so we got her pin for that. And we also got this weird blue drink that was covered in uh, cotton candy, and it came with this little guy that uh, pinned to the side of the cup that you can turn on and it flashes blue stays solid that kind of thing and that's kind of a fun little ulsa cut clip um over in magic kingdom that we went to, to uh there was a christmas party that they were they were they were having uh the, there was one called jingle bell jingle bam and there was one that was the the very merry christmas party and so they had all sorts of things going on after the park closed um jen picked up this apple that was full of apple oh this was from the food and wine festival excuse me um but uh as part of the their celebration they had um caramel apple popcorn so that was in here and then uh back in the merry very merry christmas party there were they had uh, a limited edition pin so we picked up one of those and then um uh, oh, and here's a pin that we got from Epcot with, again, Figment on his, uh, on there. There's a game that they play in the Magic Kingdom, and it's a collectible card game called uh, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. And we hadn't heard of this. I don't think they have it in Disney Disneyland. But what you do is you have these cards, and all the cards have, like, little you know, some sort of attack on them. Uh, and then um, based on like the backgrounds, and there's like symbols up here, you go to various, you know, magic portals, which are basically like LCD screens, and you can fight with the uh, villains that are there by showing your card. And it, there's some sort of a camera that reads the card, and then it knows um, like what the attack was and whether or not you were successful. And as part of the very merry christmas party they had a couple of limited they, they had limited edition cards so all of us got these apparently they're very collectible i haven't seen them before so i'll have to research that and also as part of the jingle bell jingle bam they were handing out these little ornaments so we each got uh, an ornament and they had these really cool little glasses we've seen these at home depot so if you're interested in getting some uh you can, but you can see there's kind of like a sort of a lenticular sort of a look here. And if you look through these at small lights that are similar to like Christmas lights or, you know, bright stars or whatever, those lights uh, appear as Christmas trees. So it kind of changes the shape of the lights. Um, and it's really kind of interesting to see fireworks and things like that. You'll see like little Christmas tree explosions going on and that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that we did, did that we liked in Animal Kingdom, we really the, was the World of Avatar stuff. Well, at least I really liked it. Uh, that was one of our favorite rides. We rode the Flight of Passage ride, and I really like these little uh, etched glass balls that they have, um, or they, they they have like sometimes you'll see them as um, like cubes or whatever. But this seemed to be the like the perfect example of what you would want to do with one of these things. So there's a base here that you turn on and when you turn it on different lights show up but when you put the glass ball on it you can see it looks like one of the pandora wood sprites from avatar and it changes color and it looks super pretty uh, especially in the dark it's, it's really just awesome and it looks just like the little floaty wood sprites that they have uh, in the movie so i had to pick one of those up I'm, of course, a huge Alice fan, so through all of our travels, I picked up little Alice things. I've got some um, some pins that I liked that I didn't have. Um, I have one of these uh, snow globes already, but uh, over the course of moving and cats and cats and cats, um, 
this guy's mug has broken off and like his ears have broken off and I've super glued this thing, uh, my original one, like, I don't know, countless times. So when I found uh, another one, I thought I would pick that up uh, because it's nice to have one that's not busted. Um, and of course, I always like to get uh, one nice piece and I thought that this, this Alice was beautiful. She's ceramic and um, has a little bit of styrofoam there but um she's ceramic and uh very well detailed and eh, maybe she's a resin yeah okay anyway um very well detailed and really pretty and wasn't terribly expensive so i'm happy with her very nice all right and saving the best for last obviously uh the uh, black spire outpost uh, but to the Star Wars experience uh, that absolutely had my number on it. It was just, I, I couldn't not buy pretty much everything that was in it. So um, anyway, uh, let me walk through some of the things that we got here. So um, I got, let's, well, let's start with the lightsaber. The lightsaber is pretty cool. I went with peace and justice. You get to pick the different pieces that, that make up your lightsaber. So the emitter, the top section, the part with the button on it, the bottom section, and then the pommel. Um, and the bottom of the pommel is where the uh, speaker is. So when you hear stuff, that's where it's coming out of. Uh, and then the blade comes with it. It's a 30, 31 inch blade, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's heavy. I'm going to weigh it for you here in a second, but you can see when I turn it on. I got the blue kyber crystal. I'll show you more about kyber crystals in a second. And part of what you're paying for there is the experience. So when you go build a lightsaber, there's a whole experience where you go in and the you're in a special room and you get to choose your pieces and it's kind of like going through a whole jedi ceremony to build this thing and it's absolutely awesome absolutely recommended um i definitely would do it again uh not that i probably need a second lightsaber but i probably need a second lightsaber okay so um let me get a scale here this thing is here we go on and zeroed and we'll do our best to sort of weigh this thing uh, let me put the hook on the pommel down a little bit there okay and it is two pounds nine ounces which is um little switch 1.17 kilograms it's a good hefty thing i mean you don't you don't think this is plastic. It's not. It's all metal. It's very, very awesome. Uh, so anyway, uh, but inside here, like right underneath where the power button is, there is a kyber crystal and it's a small piece of like plastic, probably with a, um, like some sort of an RFID chip or something in it. Uh, and the kyber crystals are interesting. We'll get into that in a second. Um, and then to take it home, you get this sort of sheath and there's like a piece of like thick foam down here and thinner foam up here so that you can slide the whole thing in. Um, we carried it onto the plane. It is about the length of one of the overhead bins, but we, uh, I asked the flight attendant to put it in the first class coat closet and it came across no problem. So, um, let's talk about Kyber crystals. So I got a desk clamp. Oh, when you forgot to mention when you go and go to do get your lightsaber they have different pins that you get based on which type of lightsaber you're making they have four different kinds uh one looks more like sith stuff one is a little more um natural where it's like rancor teeth and that sort of thing and one looks kind of aged brass i went with one the the kind that looked a little more like luke had but you get this little pin and uh you wear this around and that's how they know what what stuff to give you um, when you're putting your, your lightsaber together. And I bought this desk stand for the lightsaber. There's little plastic clips that go on here and the lightsaber rests. And because of the way that the blade is not, um, it's not that heavy, you could 
do it with or without the blade, I'll probably take the blade off. Uh, I think you just twist and unlock. Now these, these are kyber crystals. I'll grab one, here's a purple one. And this is kind of an interesting thing. They're little plastic deals. Again, they probably have, you can kind of maybe see like there's an RFID chip in there or something. Um, and what, what you do is in the inside of the lightsaber, what you put one of these and that actually changes the color of your blade. So I can open up the lightsaber, put one of these in and I'll have a purple blade or I could have a white blade, red, yellow, green. Um, I just went ahead and got all the colors because a, if we get another lightsaber, we can switch out any color you want. And B, they go into this little item, which is a holocron. And this is cool. They have a, this is the um, this is the Jedi holocron. They also have a Sith one that looks like a pyramid. And I guess they all oh, they both work together. But uh, when you when you twist these things, let's see if I can do it here with one hand. Uh, these these little guys twist. Oh, did it work? Nope. Um, and these guys these guys twist. There we go, and he's on. And if you uh, see, there's a little dark spot there and a dark spot here. We can touch those. This is Master Obi Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. So, out of the what the idea is that these have stored knowledge in them, uh, and what you can do is you can put a kyber crystal into this little drawer here like this. There's the spot for the kyber crystal. And we'll just grab the purple one and see what happens. So here's the purple one. And we'll throw that in here. And when we close that, notice there's like a purple glow in here now. And when we touch the things. When war throws everything into confusion, look to the Jedi teachings for clarity. So you hear Mace Windu say something. Jedi instincts aren't natural, but come from years of training and discipline. War is the most perilous test of that discipline and training. So all of the kyber crystals do something different. And what's interesting even more is like if you put the red one in here, Yoda gets kind of mad at you and tells you uh, that, that you shouldn't be doing stuff with... Uh, whoops turned it off there. Uh, Yoda gets kind of angry at you and tells you that you shouldn't be messing with dark, the dark side of the force. Let me see if I can get that to happen. All right, so here's the purple one out. And we'll go get the red one here. We'll put that in. Let's get a little bit of a reddish tint now. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they all do different things. They have like three or four different sayings in each one. And apparently you can um, you can uh, hook the Sith one to this somehow and they interact also. So there's lots of different things that these kyber crystals and the holocrons do uh, along, along with them being part of the lightsabers. So anyway, got those. Each one comes in a little, in a little case. The bottom unscrews and there's like a top thing so if you want to mount them to your belt or you know whatever you can uh, you can do that but this, this was pretty cool um phoenix of course had to get herself a little uh bracelet here and she wore this around and uh, we would catch her talking into it like she's talking to princess leia on a secret mission so that was pretty funny we had a good time with that um, Jen went to the droid adoption place, the droid, droid depot, and built herself a droid, a custom droid. Um, these are little remote control guys, so you can, uh, let's see if I can turn it on here. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, I'll turn it on right down here. 
Okay. And then, uh, I hope that's on. Okay. Anyway, we got, we got a droid here. And then we have a remote control. And we'll turn the remote on also. And let's see what we got. Okay, so you can have him run around. And he goes pretty fast. You can rotate the head. Let's rotate him around here. And I think one of these will do blinky lights on him. There we go, see? Now what's interesting about him is uh, the second button that we have up here that wasn't doing anything. Uh, you can control little accessories. So Jen bought some blasters. Uh, here we go, blasters. And what happens is you take these little red bits off and there's a plug for this. And when you push, push the other button, the blasters will shoot. So that's pretty cool. Um, and there's all sorts of other things you can get. You can get like little, uh, uh, like grabber claws and, and all sorts of things uh, that will accessorize your droid. We have sort of a stormtrooper undercover droid here. Uh, let's see. So um, Phoenix went to the pet adoption place and got a loth cat. Lothcat does a lot of funny things. You can, he's not just a stuff, he's actually got some, some mechanical stuff in him here. Um, so you can't bend his legs or anything. Let me turn him on. He's got a, an on off switch in his belly. We'll turn him on there. And then um, like if you pet him on the head, he'll kind of make friendly noises. And if you grab his tail, he gets mad. So we'll grab his tail here and we'll... <laughs> yeah. And then if you... Here, let's see if I can do it on the floor. All right. And then if you... All right. Sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. Okay. And then uh, when you do this, he it's like he's attacking you. He's spitting. <laughs> so he's pretty fun. And Phoenix loves him. And so we we all agreed that I would do the lightsaber. Jen would go get a droid. And Phoenix would adopt herself a pet. Because that is uh, what she does. Um, Jen and I both got hats. The matching I love you I know hats. And then of course we found the pins. So we got those and added those to the hats. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, the one day that we were in Batu, I had to get myself a first order hat because why not? And it's pretty fun. This is like a hard sort of plasticky material inside here. And it's actually a pretty comfortable hat. So I wore that around. It was funny because I had this hat on. It, oh, a wild cat's talking over there. He's lonely. Um, I had this hat on, but I also had a Chewbacca shirt on. And uh, the the cast members that were in there were saying, hey, I'm getting mixed messages from you because they're all like rebels and things. Let's turn the cat off. They're all like rebels and uh, they're playing their part. And uh, they're like, which which are you for? Are you for the order or for the, or, or for the rebels? <laughs> that was pretty funny. Uh, and the last stuff we did, uh, we went to Oga's Cantina. We had basically all of the drinks, all of the drinks. And I had the Rancor Teeth Beer Flight. They have four different beers that are specific to Oga's Cantina. They serve them to you in this little tray. And each one is in a Rancor tooth. These are a ceramic material. This is like a cast resin material, this thing is. And of course they tell you, you know, beer one, two, three, and four, they tell you what they are. Um, each tooth is pr actually a, a good good heft to it. So if we measure it, that's like a five and a half ounce. It's it's a it's a pretty hefty thing. So what is that? Fifteen one hundred and fifty seven grams. Okay. So that's 
a pretty hefty deal. The, this resin is actually pretty light. It, it doesn't uh, doesn't weigh what you think it does, but it's it's got it's good substance. It's not going to break or anything uh, anytime soon. So here's the Ewok cup. This this drink is the Yub Nub, and it was pretty tasty. And it comes in a tiki style cup. The cup is ceramic. And it's got the whole battle on here. Oh. All the stuff says first edition on it. I assume that it increases the collector's nature of it. Uh, I don't know. Um, but you can kind of see in there. It's a nice finish. And that's pretty hefty. That weighs uh, one pound four ounces. Or uh, 578 grams. So that's a good hefty cup. And then we have the Cave Dweller. Also comes in sort of, a, there's a ceramic cup. It looks like it's carved wood, it's not. It's definitely like a ceramic. And it is also pretty heavy. So again, uh, over a pound for that. And each drink comes with a different coaster. So when you get the Yub Nub, you get this coaster. And when you get the Rancor Teeth, you get that one. And uh, when you get the um, Yub Nub, yeah, when you get the Cave Dweller, I think it ended up being this, this one maybe? Can't remember. Um, and then we, of course, just got a, the, the, when once we'd gotten these, the uh, cast member that was serving us uh, just was like, here, you, you probably just spent your life savings here. So we'll just go ahead and give you these other two collector things for free. Anyway, that is, oh, and we also got the, Jen loves her porgs. So we got Christmas porg pin. All right. So that is the haul from Disneyland or Disney world, all of the different kingdoms. And, um, yeah, there you go.